How is it going today, everybody? Today we're gonna to talk about some of the most important electrical considerations when you are building your soundproof studio. So this is gonna go through a lot of the things I learned and some things to watch out for when you are talking with your electrician. So if you're ready to learn about some electrical stuff with your soundproof studio, stick around. All right, let's jump in. <laughs> So the first thing I'm gonna say is right off the bat, you should work with a licensed electrician. This should be one part of your team when you're building your soundproof studio. Even if you have some electrical knowledge, you're gonna wanna talk with someone who knows codes, uh, who can handle codes. As an individual homeowner, you cannot do uh, codes, therefore you could not pull a building permit from your city if you are not a licensed electrician. If by all means you are a licensed electrician, then awesome. You can just do this on your own and I'll teach you a little bit about the soundproofing side of what you have to think through with electrical systems so you don't get buzzes or hums or things like that that can be really annoying down the road. The second thing is that you should learn this information in the first place because your electrician may not know this type of stuff. This is really specific and related to sound and a lot of electricians would not need to know this information. So when you're talking with your electrician, you can have this knowledge and explain to them what it is that you want for your home studio so that you can avoid these hums, buzzes, and issues down the road that would be really annoying, let's be honest, if you finished your entire studio and then there was like a buzz or something that you couldn't get out. I will say that my home studio um, does not have any annoying buzzes or anything like that, and I broke some of the rules that I will mention here, so I'll let you know that this is not like a deal breaker, um, but just let's jump in so that you know some of these things when you're building your studio. So the third thing we'll talk about is the electrical panel. It all comes down to your panel. With my studio, we actually used a sub panel, which you can see right here. We ran a line from the actual electrical panel in my house, through the attic, down the outside, underground, two feet underground in a ditch, and then up into a sub panel um, where you can see that I have all my power for my studio dedicated in this panel here. So that is why I recommend hiring an electrician. This is some heavy duty electrical work. So the first thing you wanna talk about with your sub panel is that you're gonna have two legs. So a panel uh, is getting power from the electrical service via two main legs in your electrical panel. And it's not quite as obvious as you may think. It's not just the left side and the right side of your sub pan or your electrical panel, but rather it is the one leg is gonna be all the odd numbered breakers and the other leg is gonna be all the even numbered breakers. Now the goal with soundproofing is you wanna have a balanced load, meaning the same amount of amperage going to your uh, odd leg as to your even leg or leg one versus leg two. And the other thing you wanna do is make sure that one leg has all your audio equipment on it. So this could be anything you plug in that is related to audio, your um, amps, your speakers, your interface, all that stuff. You want it all to be on its dedicated leg within your electrical panel and then all of your wiring, uh, sorry, lighting, HVAC, um, a refrigerator if you have that in your studio, all that stuff, you want it to be on the other leg. So this will keep the two legs separate. So you have audio on one, everything else on the other. Now this in theory is really easy. The only problem is you need that balanced load. And so one of the problems that you can have is if you, you know, it's a hot day or something and you're running all your fans and your HVAC is going full blast and one leg is pulling way more than your actual um, audio leg is pulling. You could, ex you could bl uh, blow a circuit on that or blow a fuse and that could shut everything down. So it could be a problem. So you want to kind of take into consideration a balanced load. And again, talk about this with your electrician, see what he thinks, he or she thinks, and then go forward from there. But the concept is what's important right here. The next thing I want to talk about is low voltage lines. So I had no idea what low voltage meant, and it's really what it sounds like. It means that if you have any sort of lighting or appliances or equipment that are pulling a lower voltage, a lot of times this is low voltage lighting, um, but any sort of thing that has a voltage that's lower than the traditional 120 volts or 220 system that's coming out of your outlet, 
um, that is considered low voltage. So it's usually in the 12 volt to 24 volt range. And a lot of times under cabinets or these kind of smaller accent lights, which could be really nice, those are usually low voltage lights. So if you are having any low voltage lighting in your studio, you wanna talk with your electrician and follow these steps, which is number one, ideally your low voltage lighting will run low in your studio and your high voltage wires will run higher in your studio or vice versa. You just want to keep them far apart. So that as a general rule can be helpful. If you at any point need to cross your low voltage and your line voltage or regular voltage wires, then you need to do so at a 90 degree angle. And this will help with buzzes and noise and things like that. Ideally, you will not want to run any of your low voltage wires parallel with your regular line voltage wires. And if you absolutely have to run them somewhat close to each other, try to keep it at a minimum of three feet. So with low voltage wiring, this is important because this will help reduce hums, buzzes, and things like that. And that's our main goal is we're trying to just do all this electrical work up front so that you can try to have the cleanest sound possible on the back end. Next, I want to talk about which type of lighting I would recommend using. Beyond that low voltage lighting, I used LED lights in my studio and I would highly recommend them. LED lighting is not only efficient and saves you money, but it's also good for sound. It doesn't create too much of a buzz or hum. Um, you know, one of the worst lights you could use is fluorescent, so I don't do that. LEDs are a lot better. Uh, they're easy to install. And one light that I highly recommend using if you're interested for an easy install is the halo light at Home Depot. I actually have the exact model down in the notes below, but this was recommended to me by the soundproofing company, which I also recommend using them for your soundproofing supplies. But these lights are just overhead disc lights that are, have a very shallow um, profile. So when you're doing soundproofing, when you install these lights, you don't want something that's going to create a huge hole in your wall um, and create a big problem with leakage. So these lights actually solve that problem and you can use putty pads, which we'll talk about in another video, to kind of seal them in on the backside. But all this said, I actually did find that the lights were extremely bright. I put six of them in my ceiling, which is wonderful, but I actually did use a dimmer. And if you've heard anything about dimmers and sound before, you know they don't go together. In fact, I would recommend, if possible, you don't really want to use a dimmer. However, I have found that using my dimmer with these LED lights caused absolutely no problem with the sound whatsoever. So if you want to go this route, it worked for me. I'm very confident that it would work for you. And to be honest, it's really nice. I keep them dimmed a lot of the time because I want to create a nice, cool vibe in the studio. If I had them on full blast without a dimmer, it would feel really, really bad in here. So something to keep in mind as you develop your studio is what type of lighting you want to use. Another option that I think would have been kind of cool is to use a chandelier or two chandeliers in the studio. Um, and one thing that's cool about that is if you had a chandelier that's just a single wire coming down through your wall, it's a very, very small hole it would help with soundproofing tremendously. And I think if I could do it all over again, I might go that option. These are some ideas to think about with the types of lighting to use. Again, that low voltage lighting could look really cool under cabinets, under your desk, things like that. So don't shy away from it. And that leads me to my last point here, which is ultimately with this electrical and lighting and things like that in your studio, be creative and have fun with it. You know, I think one of my regrets is I could have been more creative with lighting, but I was so afraid of the soundproofing that I went this sort of easy route instead of creating like really cool sconces or, or things like that. Uh, you know, you could just do a lot of really interesting light designs. So use that creativity that I'm sure you already have as an artist, as an engineer, as a creative person and, and apply it to your lighting. And then use some of these ideas that I've told you about to try to make sure that you get as clean a sound as possible. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. I want to let you know that if you enjoyed this video, I have a free soundproofing course. So if you want to take a deeper dive than just this sort of overview that I do each week, definitely check out that course below in the link. And I will see you every Monday uh, with more soundproofing advice for you. So definitely check in, subscribe, like, do all those wonderful things, and I'll see you next week. Have a great one. 
Thank you.